The Ladies Pro Bowler Tour on ESPN is being brought to you by Seagram's Coolers, pure Seagram's, pure fun. By Delta Faucet, express yourself, get a grip on a Delta Faucet. And by Thompson's Water Seal Exterior Stain, beauty that lasts at last. And now let's meet tonight's top five, making her fourth consecutive appearance at the championship round. It's 10-time titleist Nikki Giannoulias. Her opponent in the opening game will be 24-year-old Michelle Mullen of nearby Matson, Illinois. Starting from the middle of the field is eight-time champion Jeannie Maiden of Solon, Ohio. And holding down the number two position is the current national amateur champion Patty Ann of Bloomington, Illinois while 31-year-old Robin Romeo will need to win just one game in order to collect $40,000 and her fourth title of 1989. And welcome everyone to Palatial Stardust Bowl in Addison, Illinois for the championship round finals of the $200,000 Seagram's Coolers U.S. Open. Hi everyone, I'm Danny Schreiner and welcome to Addison, Illinois and the key phrase this week, survival of the fittest. That's right, low scores here this week. As a matter of fact, only three players out of a field of 240 that started this event ended up averaging plus 200 here at Stardust Bowl this week. Working with me once again is Leila Wagner and Leila, the scores were down, but it was a very competitive condition for the U.S. Open. Well, it really was, Danny, and I feel that the reason for the low scores was the fact that we crossed so many pairs in quality. Qualifying. And there was a, a big variety of lane conditions as you cross those pairs. And it was the key for the players. If they were able to make those adjustments quickly, find the right ball, find the right line, and stay out of trouble, they were the players that were able to stay out of trouble. A diversified field this week in our top five. And, of course, one player, one of eight amateurs to make the top 24 is Patty Ann. Well, Patty Ann isn't your normal amateur player. She's been out on the tour for five years. She won a title as a professional. And in 1986, she was an amateur player in the U.S. Open and finished fourth. So she's had a lot of tournament experience. It's early on in 1989, but if Robin Romeo wins here this evening, she'll surpass $70,000. She'll win the biggest event of the year, and I think pretty much put the wraps on Bowler of the Year. You don't believe that? Well, no, I don't. I think as far as somebody topping her money winnings, that would be tough to do. However, a player could come in and dominate the last 16 events and actually steal those Bowler of the Year titles from Robin. However, I really like her chances. $200,000 all told, $40,000 for first. But before we get to the title game, it's match number one between Nikki Giannoulias and Michelle Mullen. Stay tuned. And welcome back, everyone, to Stardust Lange in Addison, Illinois, located about 15 minutes from O'Hare Airport. And uh, Nikki Giannoulias, fourth consecutive appearance in the championship round. An amazing way is how she got there again, Denny. It went to the final game for the third consecutive week she made it. Had to beat Lisa Wagner in the process. Opening shot, oh, my, and a split to start game number one. Denny, they're going to find, actually, I think the scores, once again, are going to remain a little bit low here on the television pair. The lanes looked quite a bit uh, tighter for the players in the practice session while they were practicing. So they feel like they almost have to point the ball towards the pocket. And if they overpoint it, they're going to end up with some splits. And we'll develop that story as these matches go on. Only three players averaging 200 for the week. And uh, as they crossed the house here in three different sections, you had to take a parcel of bowling equipment with you because many players were using a different ball on every pair. It was really different, Denny, uh, something that I've never really seen in the past. But I tell you what, if, if you could, like we talked about in the opening, if you could make those adjustments and decide what ball to use quickly and stayed out of trouble, that was the, those were the players that made it into the top 24. So the opening shot on the right-hand lane through the nose for Michelle Mullen. Good look at Michelle Mullen's game. This is her only her second appearance on television. She has a five-step approach, very good footwork, nice cupped wrist position. And as she follows through, you're going to see good knee bend. She gets a lot of turn on the ball. Opens up, converting the 3-6, and she has a lot of fans here because Matson's only about 50 miles from this bowling center. Oh, that's right. She has her mother and uh, a few other family members and a lot of friends that came down to watch her participate. 
former collegiate player and an outstanding player in her own right at the University of Illinois. She was the three-time collegiate All-American. Playing right now to get on track, a light hit in the 2-4-5 stands. And boy, adjustment's going to be the key to winning matches here in the championship round as well. It really is. Uh, both Michelle's uh, game and Nikki's game are very similar. They like to cross boards, as we say. They like to swing the ball a little bit out to the right and have it come flying back with a lot of power. Some folks clapping as she lets the ball go, but I know you played here this week, Leana, and spares were at a premium this week. The game came back to the players. Spares were tough, Denny. I saw a lot of uh, a lot of spares missed uh, one time one way and then the next time on the other way, but uh, she, she sure didn't miss this one as she just covered this perfectly. Up the track area and a nice solid strike on lane 26. Nikki really amazed me, Danny. I qualified next to, to next to Nikki, and it, as you'll find, she really got lost in the first few rounds. You can get a look at Nikki's game. She actually pushes the ball away first. She has a four-step delivery. So again, look at the cupped wrist position. Very, very low to the line. A lot of power in her release. When I was qualifying next to her, and, uh, she just had such a tough time. She was either high to the pocket or real light to the pocket. And uh, she barely made the top 56 cut. She only made that by 13 pins. And then from there, she shot a 258 game to make it into the top 24. Yeah, she qualified 22nd, so she's been right on the razor's edge all week long, looking to double up here and gain a little advantage in the match. Through the nose again, and she gets the big break. And uh, she'll remember that shot. The big break that was. That ball crossing over to the, the Brooklyn side here. As we'll get a good look at it. Now, she went high on lane 25 on her previous shot. Here, that ball was uh, crossing over, and <laughs> that was a big break for the double. It looked like Michelle lost that one in the downswing and nearly paid dearly for it, but breaks up the split. Most all the players this week were relatively playing around the second to the third arrow, Denny. Some pairs you moved into around 17. Other, other pairs we were playing around 10. So uh, I think we'll see a little bit of a variety here this evening with the players' balls. Take a look and see if we can see her drop it. She really uh, didn't get the extension on it. Very steady indeed, and last week, what a heartbreaker for Michelle Mullen. She was fourth heading into the position round game and dropped from fourth to sixth, and she told me, winked at me before the show and said, I made sure this week I had enough pins, so no matter what I did, I was going to make the telecast. You know, it really was a heartbreaker. Michelle bowled so well all week last week, and for her to drop out in the last game, both Nikki Giannullius and Leanne Barrett went around her, and uh, she shed a few tears, but she came back real strong this week. And looking for her first strike, and she gets it in the fourth. So Mullen with an X, and Nikki G working on the double. We'll be back with more right after this timeout. Pretty good first shot, left the four, and then nicked it out. So she stops at a double and still leads by three pins. Okay, take a look at her first shot here. She's going to leave a four pin. The ball finishing a little too strong, a little high. Head pin going against the wall. Knocks the seven. And the rear end tried to get the four, but <laughs> didn't quite make it. Not only has it been a stressful week, but uh, diagnosed earlier today with an inner ear infection and strep throat is Nikki Giannullia. So she's battling right now just to keep her balance. <laughs> Well, that definitely can affect your balance and your timing, Denny. It's amazing. She was feeling very ill even yesterday and, and to do as well as she did. We've been out here six weeks now in a row, and uh, the constant competing, the pressures, there was no time in between the last tournament into this tournament, uh, no rest, no break period. And if you're constantly bowling good, you're, you're keeping your body just going to a point where uh, you have no time to rest. 
Of course, Nikki making the telecast last week and then having to drive from Washington to Chicago in the motorhome. And you get here just in time to put the bowling shoes back on and practice. And you're right, it's a very draining segment. And of course, still three weeks yet to go for the ladies. That's correct. We're heading up to Bismarck, North Dakota for the WIBC and uh, the National Queens Tournament next week. Just a one pin lead right now and Michelle Mullen could erase that with a double in the fifth. little flat hit there, Danny, the ball not quite driving hard enough. Uh, her ball almost seems as if it's bouncing in the front part of the lane. But you can see right where she's playing and about the third arrow on that shot and the ball starts to make a break back but just not driving hard enough. The six pin just sits in the channel. Of course this week perhaps uh, the strategy, especially in match play. All right. uh, Hey, nine was a pretty good score this week. Nine spare, a game of 190 would have won a lot of matches. It sure was, and uh, the match play was a big important part this week. Robin Romeo was basically able to stay out of trouble, and she only won six and a half matches going into her last round. So uh, these were typical scores that you did see this week. A little donut there in the first frame, maybe catch a double, and uh, a lot of spare shooting. a shaker strike on lane 25 and if there is one thing I like about Michelle Mullins game there's not a lot of head belly involved she's pretty much going direct and trying to hit the pocket she is going more direct here Danny and that's um, what she's capable of doing she is capable of changing her game I've been able to see her in a tournament Canoga Park she was really swinging the ball out so uh, she's able to do uh, just about any type of condition and I think that's what's going to make her one of the better players Well, that one's wide of the mark, and uh, oh, my goodness. That's the out-of-bounds area, Denny, that we hit. Outside that second arrow, there was a lot of lane conditioner, and if you sent it just right of the second arrow, not heading towards the pocket, you were uh, lucky to get maybe six pins. But uh, this here is not going to be an easy spare conversion. The one, seven, eight, nine. Thank goodness the 10 pin left. Well, the five pin is not present in this, and that's normally what takes out that eight pin. So the ball can really only take the one, the nine, and exactly yep. how I called it. That's what happened. Well, a good effort nonetheless, but a second open for Nikki Giannullius, and now Michelle Mullen leads by 14 pins. Here you can see the ball's going to take the one, nine, the head pin's going to go right into the seven, and there was no five there to take out that eight. the bucket boy every time you got aggressive and got the ball a little bit right this week you know and this is set up like a u.s open golf tournament the rough is a foot high the greens are as hard as they are at augusta in the springtime and attila the hun must have set the pin placements this week well you know for a, for a tournament of um this many players and with all the top name players here as well as the amateur players it's it's good to have a difficult condition where you do have to make some changes and you really have to think and uh, that's what we came down to this week. You had to think quick. Crosses over and sacrifices and carries the bucket. So Michelle Mullen now by 14 in game number one. We'll be back with a conclusion after these messages. And after a through the nose shot to cross lane conversion of the three pin. Well, actually, Michelle has gotten uh, pretty lucky here on her last two attempts on lane 26. Here she was going to break up another split, as she did previously on this lane, and leaves herself with only the three pin to shoot at. Well, two, four, five. Now, what about the oil carry down? It's long oil processed this week for the U.S. Open. Now it's carrying down, and all the players told me that this pair is much tighter than it was, say, last night during match play. Well, that's true, Danny, and it, they do start over with the lane conditioning procedure, so it should be similar to what they were in the morning blocks. Uh, some of the mornings were a little different than others, and that was also uh, difficult to... 
thing to adjust to. And oh, she, that was not an easy spare to convert. Well, the first three rounds of the tournament, Leala, weren't the lanes much more tighter than they were in match play? Uh, yes. One, once th the three days of qualifying were very similar. The lanes uh, were all very tight in the morning, and then they broke down throughout all the, the plays. And then uh, going into the semifinals, the lanes opened up a little bit more. There was a little more back end, and then into the finals that they pretty much stayed the same. Well, you know, it's a tough tournament. Players are running out the spare conversions. Nikki G trying to get something started, and there you see the shot that's happened so many times, the half hit. You throw it great, and it just doesn't react. Well, that's true, and that's here with long oil and the oil carrying down. The back ends just aren't finishing hard enough. The ball's not driving hard enough into the pocket, and the six fin's just sitting there in the channel. All right, let me pose a question for you now. They've practiced for a half an hour. Now they're bowling. What can the players do to adjust? Do you go to the ball that hooks the absolute most and move way to the right, or what do you do in this situation? Well, Denny, you can really look at it two ways here. They're hitting the pocket, and they're getting nine, and they're sparing. And uh, as long as your opponent's not starting to string strikes on you, they need to. you do need to be more aggressive out here in the championship round, and they are bowling for a lot of money. If you go to a softer ball and get it to finish a little harder, they may have problems with it hooking too early on them and then driving into the pocket too soon, leaving themselves with splits. So right now, they stay with the same ball, maybe make a minor adjustment to the right, try to get a little bit more of an angle to the pocket. They might get the 10 out. Better shot there and a nice reaction so she needed a strike in the ninth and she still has a possible 200 game good look at nikki's four-step approach again from behind she's really gets a lot of fingers and lift on that ball something else a characteristic denny the farther in seemed you got a little bit better of a reaction Well, that one's going to be high into the pocket and crashes through the nose and leaves the 6'10". And she's a very fortunate player. She's thrown the ball high on the right-hand lane three consecutive times. And light on the left-hand lane twice. So she's making the adjustments on lane 25 for lane 26. Possibility of a tie here as well. If she spares and strikes out, she would shoot 1-7 or make that 200, rather. Oh. oh boy, takes the six off the ten, and that really swings the door wide open for Nikki Giannoulias. It sure does. When Michelle looks like she has the match pretty much under control, the six ten chops, and this was a prime example of how difficult the spares were. She was expecting that ball to slide more, and then all of a sudden, here's the finish in the back end, and she chops the six ten. A great shot there on the 10th frame. Well, that was a clutch shot. You're right. Now, if she throws two more, she shoots 189, which would force Nikki Giannoulias to strike. Michelle's uh, best finish this year, sixth earlier at Canoga Park. Obviously, the only player on the telecast without a professional title. She's been working with a lot with Donna Adamak recently, helping her in her physical and mental game. Important strike here. Oh, almost carried the light shot. Pretty good shot there, too. And she spares it'll be 179. And uh, there's a distinct possibility that uh, Nikki G will advance if she can at least count 20 in the 10th frame. Easier said than done on this condition, <laughs> though, right? 20. A lot of people would love to have had 20. So Michelle Mullen finishes with 179 and one mistake. That came when she chopped the six off the 10 of the night. A spare strike, and Nikki wins this match by one pin. And Nikki now conferring with Fran Wolf, the national tournament director, concerning, I think, a re-rack. Fran is going to give her one, so. This is uh, what Nikki gets to see right here. Well, we've mentioned this is her fourth consecutive appearance in the championship round. You know, she holds the all-time record. She made nine consecutive television shows back in 81 and 82. That's phenomenal. Well, in 1982, she was also the Bowling Writers Association Bowler of the Year. So she had uh, some great tournaments back then. Easy choice, right? <laughs> yes. Maybe you want to congratulate Bruce Pluckon as well. He's new, the new president of the B... B 
BWAA, Bowling Writers Association of America, also the uh, curator of the National Bowling Hall of Fame and Museum in St. Louis. Really pointing that ball up. She wanted to make sure uh, she got it to the pocket through the nose. Well, I think your fear there is you're right. If you don't get it to the pocket, a washout's a possibility. You got to take your chances with eight or nine. And of course, Michelle chopped the six off. Nikki will have to guard against that. We also have a possibility of tie, Denny. If Nikki spares and gets nine, we have a tie. Can you believe it? She looked like she skidded that ball right to it. Ten pin wiggled, but it didn't happen. So both players make mistakes in the late stages. And Michelle Mullen, Christmas comes early. Nikki Giannoulias, who won here in 1982, cannot convert the 6-10. She finishes fifth. And next up, it'll be Jeannie Maiden and Michelle Mullen at the US Open. Final line score on game number one, a mistake in the 10th, costing Nikki Giannoulias dearly. She finishes the week in fifth place, and uh, this was the key shot, Lee Isla. And you know, Denny, this uh, fooled both you and I, I think. She just threw this ball as hard as she could, and uh, it went into a slide, but then it just, I mean, it missed that 10 by a quarter of an inch. Another view of it. Boy, couldn't slice that off any more perfect. She needed a spare there and strike to win the match. And you're seeing the final practice shots from Jeannie Maiden out of Solon, Ohio, with eight championships thus far. Qualifying third this week. And uh, she had a very solid week indeed. As, uh, she also averaged 225 on the television pair. We might point out that uh, the finalists averaged just a fraction better than 210 on lanes 25 and 26. And well, I know you're smiling, Leila, when you look at this, some heavy duty money on top. Oh, you bet. Uh, first place, $40,000 with 20,000 going to the runner up. Third place, a nice check for 10,000. Fourth, 7,500. And as we saw, Nikki Giannullius just part with $6,000. So some great money this week, paid all the way uh, down to 60 places. Well, this has become such a great event, uh, sponsored by Seagram's Coolers and, of course, the Bowling Proprietors Association of America, $200,000 on top. And, of course, they have the big men's U.S. Open, 500000 there, 100000 on top to the winner. And uh, it's just nice to get those kind of sponsors involved with a game of bowling. It sure is. Uh, I'd like to get some more corporations involved in... And we start match number two. Michelle Mullen starts on lane 25. Got to have a little looser arm swing after the break that she just got, and she throws a nice shot in the first. We bet, and it looks like lane 25 has actually favored Michelle. Lane 26 hooking a little early for her. Now uh, Jeannie Maiden coming up from the seventh place position. She made a nice move. Well, she hit that one about as hard as she could, and she got the five pin to dance a little bit. Jeannie's best finish here in 1989 has been second in both the Ebonite Fireboat Classic and also the Lady Ebonite Classic. Nice look at her game. She has a four-step approach, a very deliberate first step, very high backswing. Good follow-through, great extension, also good knee bend. Trying to double up and jump out early, and boy, she got a nice break on the left-hand limb. She sure did. Uh, four or five on the deck, uh, we might say, on that one. As you can see here, the ball's not going to finish. <laughs> As it's real light, the head pin goes against the wall, comes back. Two pin topples, and uh, they all fall down. Some gang tackling there on lane 25, but uh, any double is a good double, as they say here this week, huh? That's right. <laughs> Right back at him, ball skids through, and the 2-4-5 is left, and it looks like Michelle made a little adjustment with the feet because she didn't go high on the right-hand lane. Yes, she did, and uh, it was a good adjustment for her. We saw her go through the nose 
happened the last three times on lane 26, so that time she, she made the adjustment, went light. Michelle's average on the TV pair, 208, which was a nice average. Oh boy, 245, two and the four leave, and the five stays as she kind of shakes her head on the way back. I guess the, the five players that made it this week too, Leila, were able to fight the adversity of missing some spares throughout the week. I think so, Denny. I think when they changed from pair to pair, they stayed out of trouble in those first three, four frames while they were able to get lined up. And uh, I think they missed a share of their spares too. Good shot on the left-hand lane, leaves the solid 10 pin. A real nice hit on lane 25 as the six pin just wraps around the 10. In case you've just joined us, Nikki Giannulli is losing in the opening game to Michelle, 179-168. Next in line would be Patty Ann, the current national amateur champ, and on top this week, Robin Romeo of Van Nuys, California. Michelle switching balls for her spare, flying her a harder, harder, shinier surface. I know one thing. I knew the players were in trouble this week, Leila, when I saw two or three players start throwing strike balls with their spare balls and spare balls with their strike balls. It got that confusing at times. It was a rough week out there. Good look at uh, Jeannie. Had a nice year in 1988. Runner-up to Lisa Wagner. Well, she pulled that a touch through the nose and uh, breaks up the split and leaves the three-pin. Pulled it and really had no ball speed on that shot, Denny. Very, very slow. And uh, she broke up what could have been a little disaster for her. She came back and uh, took out her tape and put another piece in, not quite the feel that she wanted. Jeannie's made a few changes again in her game. She's gone back to a four-step approach. She was at a five for a while. Very versatile performer. She spares up, and uh, as you looked at this field this week, it's an interesting tournament for the professionals because there were 103 amateurs among the 240 field, and how does that change uh, the early qualifying when you have to bowl with amateur players as uh, opposed to professionals? Well, a lot of the amateur players that do compete in the U.S. Open, Denny, have won local qualifiers, so they are used to bowling in some type of a tournament. However, we do have our own format and they have to get used to the rules. And sometimes the crossings can be a little tough for them at first. Oh boy. Looked like a pretty good shot at about 45 feet, but it ends up a disaster, the four, seven, nine, ten. but you can make this. Yes, you can make it with a little luck. Here it looks like she gets slow again, not giving the ball the room on the right Room to the right, however, she went huh, light last time on this lane, so this time she makes the adjustment and the ball hooks right through the nose. Trying to slide that four pin over. Oh, Denny! Oh. Well, the four went right in front of the ten. Magnificent shot under the pressure of the U.S. Open, and she doesn't get the break, so we'll be back with more right after this. A spare of the five pin in the fourth for Michelle Mullen. And uh, she was fortunate after the opening shot. Yes, she was. She almost left herself again with the bucket, which she did not convert last time. And the head pin came off the wall, decided to trip out the two and the four. shot there and she looked like she set that ball a little shorter Leila is that something you can do when the lanes tighten up to get into a roll earlier uh, yes Denny and you know I saw the players that were scoring or were able to score were the ones that were actually setting the ball shorter well, of course Patty Ann does that probably as good as anybody in the country right you bet she sets it very very short Nice comeback after an open frame by Jeannie. Well, it appears that 26 is the better of the two lanes for Jeannie Maiden, wouldn't you say? Yes, and Michelle Mullen likes 25, yeah. so uh, each player has their favorite lane. And both players are finishing on the lane they don't like. Always happens that way, right? 
<laughs> Seems to. Jeannie has a nice average on uh, the television pair, 225. A little better speed this time on the left-hand lane, and she liked that shot when it left her hand. I think she did, too, and the ball just didn't finish as we saw Nikki lead before the flat 10 as the six pin just sits in the channel. It's been a tough year for Jeannie, too, because she led a couple of tournaments and got beat both times from the top seat position. Well, this has given her a chance to come all the way up the ladder here. You could see she wanted that double desperately. Jeannie's best finish in a U.S. Open is seventh, and that was in her hometown of Cleveland. And she had an excellent opportunity to make the telecast two years ago. Yes, yeah, she said she bowled herself right out of it, so uh, she recognizes the fact that maybe the, the pressure from her hometown got to her. Still looking for that first strike on lane 26. It's going to be Brooklyn if it's anything. Kicks out the 10 pin. She leaves the three. And all right, the viewers at home are saying, well, geez, Denny and Leila, why doesn't she just move to the right with her feet and go a little more direct? Well, Denny, if she moves to the right here, she has that chance of catching that out of bounds area. And like we mentioned, the players, some of the players were playing deep inside. However, here now she's gone inside. She swung a little bit more. She didn't get it back. She left herself with a couple of buckets. She tried to go a little bit more direct inside, and the ball's hooking early on her. She does need to make some other type of adjustment on lane 26. If it is getting it out into that oil, she might have to do it, because she's not going to beat players like Jeannie Maiden or Patty Ann or Robin Romeo without hitting lane 26. superb shot on the left-hand lane so she has to strike up in the seventh but she trails by seven pins more of game number two in the u.s open after this pretty good shot but uh, ended up leaving the four and the seven so a spare up in the seventh for Jeannie Naden, who now leads by just five sticks Really a good shot by Jeannie. The ball just didn't finish once again on lane 26. If you send it a little bit too much to the right, it just doesn't make it back with enough power. Of course, and what happens to your arm swing when you're used to arcing the ball throughout most of the year, and then you come to a tournament where if you throw it right, it's out the window, it's out of bounds, it changes your whole swing plane, doesn't it? Well, it does, and also on as we cross the pair, sometimes your swing went to the right, and others you had to point it to the left, so uh, you were changing your swing as well as balls and everything else. Good shot there in the eighth. So she strikes in the eighth to kind of keep pace right now. Now the pressure back on the shoulders of Michelle Mullen, who has uh, yet to throw a double in this one. A key shot for Michelle in the eighth frame here against Jeannie Maiden looking for the double and her first strike on lane 26. Might be. Great shot. She actually stayed in on this shot, Denny. Now she stayed in, she went a little, just just enough to the right. And the ball comes breaking back real hard and the six spin slaps that 10 and this is her reaction. A very important double. And that almost looks like the old lacquer track shot, you know, when the ball maybe only crossed three or four or five boards. A little fade back and yeah. then a nice little finish. You're right. Roy Buckley be loving that shot, right? And a fall back special on the left hand lane. She coaxes the 10, but it won't listen. A good shot on lane 25. Just a not quite enough drive there where the six pin sits in front of the 10. Possible 206 with a spare here and a strikeout in the 10th. She takes the lead by four pins. Jeannie Maiden working on a strike, though, so for her in the night, that'll be the key shot. <laughs> Michelle uh, Mullen has performed very well here in front of the hometown fans. That's the extra pressure of bowling in the old neighborhood. She sure has, and her best 89 finish is sixth in Canoga Park, which is her best career finish as well.
Oh boy. And Jeannie hitting, hitting, split there. hitting that little uh, dark spot, as we might say, the hook spot on the lane, and uh, that ball went left. That was a very important strike there for Jeannie. Would have given her the lead in the match. Also the foundation strike. Key now make the spare and head over to the 10th frame. So best possible score of 202 if she would strike out. Still would leave the possibility for Michelle Mullen to throw two and count to win. So this one's going right down to the 10th frame. It's just a very professional execution there. You're right. A lot of ball speed. Didn't cross too many boards. Just almost like a little frozen rope there if uh, you can have one. Well, if that does anything else, it at least forces Michelle to mark, even if Jeannie doesn't double. That's right. And on lane 26, hasn't been Michelle's favorite lane. That one's going to have to hurry a little bit. Doesn't quite get the break that she needs. So with a spare, it'll be 192. And Michelle Mullen will need a mark and count to move on to the semifinal game. Just a little bit more aggressive on that shot. Jeannie gave a little bit more room, and it just didn't get back. Well, you know what they say, trust is a must. And she, I think she gave it a little more room because she knew that she was juiced up a little bit. A very disciplined player. Jeannie practices hours and hours and hours. All right, so 192 with an open in the fourth frame. And, uh, boy, she nearly converted the 4, 7, 9, 10. But now for Michelle Mullen, there you see graphically a spare and eight, and she'll advance. And if you recall, Danny, Nikki needed a spare as well. Didn't waste any time with the shot. Blew the five out, the seven wiggles and dances, but stands. A really good shot for lane 26, as we've seen her go through the beak so many times. She gave that the room. It did come back, finish, the five went. And she's gonna look to convert the seven pin. As you'll see here, the five pin, the ball just nicking the five. in and eight pins and she advances you change your strategy now for this shot Leila, or just keep throwing no, the strike not when you need eight pins denny she'll be going for that strike seven and we would have a tie But it was enough, Denny. She got that ball to hold right down the middle of the lane, right down the line. She was going for the strike. Very deliberate indeed. So she wins 194-192 while Jeannie Maiden packs her bags. Patty Ann and Michelle Mullen coming up next. And welcome back, everyone. Uh, there are the other finishers. Lisa Wagner, our defending champion, just missing finishing up in the number six slot. Leanne Barrett made a rush and finished seventh. And also Renee Fleming, who was right up there the whole time. As we look down through the rest of the top 25, uh, Vicki Fischel, a champion on the tour as well. Anne Marie Pike, 21st. And Carol Norman, also a former U.S. Open champ at 23rd. We also want to mention Pat Costello has won a U.S. Open championship, and she made the finals this week, made a little run at him. Well, 
She started last game with a strike, threw a good shot there, and uh, she'll open up with a solid 10 pin. Michelle having to feel a little bit more relaxed now, a little more aggressive shot there on lane 25. Again, switching balls to shoot her 10 pin. Becoming more confident with every game that she wins. She realizes now if she gets by Patty Ann, she'll bowl for her first ever title and, of course, the biggest on the ladies' tour. And also more money than she's won in her total three-year career. Patty Ann, the current national amateur champion, member of Team USA. Lays it down behind the line and comes out striking. Patty Ann like to play very direct. She does hit the ball very short. She's playing right around the second arrow, a little farther right than the other players. She's almost pointing the ball right to the pocket and getting it just to finish enough in the back end. This is her fifth career television appearance. So as we mentioned in the opening, she's not your normal amateur player. waste any time sets it short and will the four pin go no it won't a couple of good opening shots the interesting note concerning patty ann as leila mentioned she bowled five years on the national tour as a pro and then you have to lay off the tour for two years before you can regain your amateur status and i asked her why she did that she had some problems with her knee and she said i just decided it was time to to take a little break as she hops and skips and picks up the four. And, and then she also said, you know, with Team USA and bowling in the Olympics and a uh, chance to compete nationally and internationally, I thought it might be a great idea to become an amateur and try and make the team. Well, that's true. There's so many uh, great um, events now for amateur players around the world and collegiate bowlers. And the Bowling Fire Association of America has been endorsing them all. So. It's good to stay an amateur for as long as you can. The interesting note, too, I said, well, what about down the road? Uh, what are the possibilities? And she said, you know, I really loved competing against the best players in the world on the ladies' tour. Who knows? Maybe I'll end up back out there before it's all over. Well, she did have some severe knee problems. We all thought she might come back as a left-hander there for a while. She is very disciplined, bowls many hours a day. She also is a coach. Conversion for... Michelle Mullen from the 610. Now, she's a really an interesting story, Penny, and we'll develop that as we move on here in the semifinal game. But the uh, the sidebar story right now belongs to the local, Michelle Mullen, who has already defeated Nikki Giannoulias and Jeannie Maiden, and that's some high-priced help. You bet. Feeling very comfortable on lane 25. Gives that one a little more room. The ball doesn't come back the bucket with the seven pin well you leave a five count here you lose all sorts of pins in count she's got larry bird in the second right now 33. <gasps> looks good well, she's shooting the spares uh, like a champ huh she sure is we saw her chop the 610 and miss a bucket yeah, but uh, this week the ladies have thrown two balls most of the frames. And we are in our 56-game format, so, Denny, that makes for a lot of bowling. Oh, boy, I want to tell you. We had three rounds of eight games in qualifying. They cut to the top 60 players, bowled eight more in the morning, cut then to the top 24, and went into 24 games of match play. More speed this time and another flick of the four pin as it stands. She leads by six. Look at Patty Ann's game, a four-step approach. She's very low to line, very tall lady. Look at that knee bend, follow through, and she stays with her follow through. You know, we mentioned those knee problems. She had three different knee surgeries, and it wasn't necessarily from bowling. It was from a car accident, but the bowling aggravated the knees. And so I asked her if it bothers her anymore, and she said, no, what? I done now is gotten involved in a number of stretching exercises and that's all I do about 40 minutes a day and she said I have no problems whatsoever well there's so many much pressure going on to your left knee when you slide Denny especially for a woman that uses their legs for all their power 
that uh, the knees just have a tendency to wear out. Right back at him, and she carries the wall shot in the fourth frame. So Patty Ann and Michelle Mullen really deadlocked in a uh, an interesting match here in the semifinal. Midway through the semifinal match, a uh, not a solid five pin left, but uh, I guess if you have to leave anything to shoot at nine spare, you want the five standing. Trying to carry that Wally shot, as we say. That was a big shot this week. It was. <laughs> I mean, I think Weber could have averaged 225 here this week with that wall shot as many times as he used to carry it. <gasps> he used to love that shot. Of course, we're speaking of Dick Weber, not, not Pete. Pete. <laughs> the only way Pete Weber carried the wall <laughs> shot was the five pin went into the left wall. <laughs> tries to scare up the strike and she does a little love tap of the six pin so an X in the fifth. Patty Ann looking for a double here and her another strike on lane 26. a very solid shot and a double the first double of the match and she takes the 17 pin lead like i mentioned before penny ann's line is a lot more direct towards the pocket she's not she's setting the ball short enough that it's picking up the oil in the front part of the lane and it's just almost skidding right up to the pocket well she's the only player that's standing right and throwing the ball a little left of the top five and she did it a lot this week when she started to make her move. Right back at him. Almost. Moves the 4 7. She's uh, hit the pocket six consecutive shots, and that was the key this week crossing the house, just hitting the pocket with every shot. Coming in a little bit high, the head pin goes against the wall, sits right between the 4 and the 7. Also, a lot of crowd fans back here behind Patty Ann. She's from Bloomington, Illinois. They work at Pheasant Lane. She runs the junior program there, and they have 550 junior bowlers, Denny. She is really a delight. Uh, just loves to bowl, loves to compete, and uh, has a lot of fun doing so. Michelle Mullen, also a bowling instructor, enjoys writing. Oh, she got better roll on that shot. No, there's that 10 pin being kicked out, and there are her grandparents are happy with that shot. You bet, uh, from nearby. Grandparents were able to come in, and that's very special. My grandparents were, were watching me when I won my first title. Nice kick by that six pin there. A big, big double for Michelle, as she's having a good time here tonight. Opts for a re-rack on lane 25. Uh, this, for her, really tightens the match up because she takes the lead. With that shot in the sixth, and of course, a strike here in the seventh gives her a three-bagger. And Jackie, she made it out to Canoga Park when Michelle made the show and finished fifth. A lot easier to watch your bowl at home, though, right? Oh, you bet. All right, we'll be back with the conclusion of the semi-final game right after this. And in the seventh, a solid shot, but the 10-pin left for Patty Ann, who spared up. An interesting note, Denny. Patty Ann did win her pro title from the number two position. She defeated Pam Buckner, 187 to 168 for the title match in 1982. Another 10 pin. And she keeps wrapping away at that pocket. Well, she did make the adjustment off the two four pins she left. She left two four pins and a four seven. So she had to make a little bit of an adjustment, move a little bit left and the ball just not quite finishing hard enough now.
I asked her the key to making the telecast for her this week. She said, making my spares. Well, it really was with, uh, if you could catch the double, which it was very easy to do, you know, is to catch a double here and there, then uh, you just didn't want to have to make up those holes. Very aggressive shot, tries to trip the four and doesn't. So a three bagger is where it ends in the eighth. Really an interesting event as well. Players from 43 different states and two countries competing in this year's U.S. Open, which is uh, run by the LPBT staff, also with the direction of the Bowling Proprietors Association of America. Next year's U.S. Open, I'm told at what, Satellite Bowl in Detroit? That's right. Thanks. They do host a women's stop there. And uh, I enjoy bowling at Satellite Bowl. Done well there. Looking forward to next year. Operating right now at a 211 clip is Michelle Mullen. Looking for the foundation strike here on her good lane. She gets it. Boy, she has really developed. You can just see her bowling better and better here under all the heat, and uh, that's, that's fun to watch. Well, her first television appearance in Canoga Park, she did lose her first game, and it wasn't a very high game. So, uh, you know, she's, she's just in a, all her glory right now. Gonna have to hurry, and not the time that you want to miss the head pin. You Lose know, count in the process. Denny, Patty Ann's eyes dropped on that shot. Now, normally they stay locked in on a spot. They drop down to very short of the lane. Now, she does set the ball shorter. In order to do so, you can look shorter, but her eyes came off her target, and I think this is why she went right with that shot. Got a spare up right now, and she does so beautifully in the night. So she gives herself a chance. If she strikes out, she could shoot 211. She lost count on that, which was a very important shot for her. If she strikes out, Michelle only spares and then strikes to tie. <laughs> Robin Romeo waiting in the wings, the top seed. Well, she's waited for a break the entire game, and she gets it in the tenth. Finally tripping out the four pin there, and the seven pin looked like it was going, going to stand. And uh, you'll see here the head pin does trip out the four. The little head there knocks the seven and says, Timber. That first strike really helps tremendously, though, because it changes the complexion of the tenth frame for Michelle Mullen. She doubles. She really puts the heat on her. A light hit. Oh, what a time for that to happen. The 5-7. The ball just deflecting Denny now. Five pin did not go out. The ball's supposed to take it out. Does not go out. Not a good time. Well, if anybody can make it, she can. She's one of the most accurate players anywhere in the country. She's going to give it a run. Oh, my. Well, a game of 200, so now Michelle Mullen knows what she has to shoot in order to move on to the title game. Michelle needs a mark. Boy, she didn't waste any time through the nose and got the break of the tournament right there. Oh, you bet. That was the break of the tournament. She didn't waste any time. She got up there and uh, I thought it was going to be high and it was. She made sure she didn't send it too far right. Actually pulled a little high right through the heart of the pin. They just split in half. Sometimes it's fate, and right now she continues to break up everything, and it 
doesn't make any difference. She advances to the championship game, and, uh, well, sometimes it's just meant to be for Patty Ann. A disappointing third, but a nice $10,000 check. Well, it's enough, and she breathes a sigh of relief. It's 219 to 200, and was it a strike? Of course it was. For Michelle Mullen, she'll shoe it up against Robin Romeo for $40,000. And the magic number, 219 for Michelle Mullen in the semifinal game through the nose with that first shot, but uh, she wins and moves on to the semifinal, or wins the semifinal, rather, and moves into the championship game against our top seed, Robin Romeo. And uh, if you've enjoyed the action this evening, next week, the WIBC Queens Tournament in Bismarck, Mandan, North Dakota, certainly one of my favorite towns, uh, almost like the Quad Cities in the Midwest, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Time next Wednesday evening, live and direct, only on ESPN. And uh, for those cycling fans out there, and I know you love to cycle, Leila, why don't I enter you next year in the Tour de Trump, uh, the world-class cycling that begins at 9 p.m. Eastern, and uh, get a little exercise, uh, you know, that's good for get that heart rate up a little bit. I'm going home tomorrow, I'll start practicing, Denny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, great race, and uh, you'll enjoy that. Uh, as you see Robin Romeo on the right, and uh, Michelle Mullen, who's been a survivor, uh, she wins three games thus far, and uh, she finds herself in the biggest game of her life. You bet. She's already surpassed her career earnings, which were $14,555 up until this point. She is now guaranteed at least $20,000 for second place. And she comes out swinging in the championship game. Now, Robin really has the disadvantage, Denny. She's been sitting off in the wings for the past hour, and uh, the lanes have changed. She did get six balls. She needs to come out very aggressive. As we've seen her do in the past, we've also seen her come out and not be so aggressive, and those were the tournament she lost. Oh, my goodness. Comes out and just marks the X like a professional. And this was a very aggressive shot. Robin, a very compact game, a five-step approach, not much of a push away. Pushes the ball very low. Very good knee bend, great extension. Doesn't go too far right with the ball, really doesn't go too far left, but she was right, right at the track this week, and she likes to play in the track area. Trying to double up and put the heat right back the other way through the nose and leaves the six pin. Already won three times this year, won last week in Hyattsville. Number one in money, number two in average, number one in competitive points. Really having uh, the year of her life and her career. The one thing she's never done is won a major title, and this would be the title for her to win. Yeah. Little thumpity dump on the thumb hole, but uh, she throws a backup shot at the spares most times and is an outstanding spare player. turn that one and uh, got away with one we saw her get away with one in the 10th frame last game against patty ann uh, my good friend lyle zykes a former cohort uh, for the pba in the old press room together he's sitting with us and charting pocket hits in this championship round michelle mullen through the first three games had hit the pocket only 20 of 33 shots and yet she won the first three matches well, she only had nine strikes on lane 25 and three strikes on lane 26. So there aren't a lot of strikes out there tonight. You talk about the old adage, you have to hit the pocket to strike and win. Well, Patty Ann hit the pocket 10 of 11 shots and she exited one game early. It's not how you do it, it's how they go down. <laughs> She's made a living on the left-hand lane thus far, and now it's a 2-4-5 in the third. 
I think you'll start to feel the pressure building here in this championship game. The best finish Robin has had in the U.S. Open is second. The best career finish Michelle Mullen has had is sixth and has never won a title. So a spare up in the third, Robin Romeo. Shoot now in the third frame. Robin struck last time on lane 26, came out with a great opening shot. Originally from Brooklyn, New York, now living out in Van Nuys, California. Started bowling at the young age of six. Stood up a little quickly on that one. Oh, is it going to fall? The four pin leaves and the seven pin stands. And I don't know about you, I'd like to take this pair of lanes with me everywhere because you can throw it through the nose and you don't get a split. <laughs> Actually, I'd like to take the pins with me in that case. It look, looks like the pins are the ones that are doing all the work here. Boy, for a while there, four of them are standing, and when it's That's all right. said and done, just the seven pin remained. Great action. Takes advantage of the break and spares up, and I just have a sneaking suspicion this one's going right for the 10th frame. I think so, as the last three matches have. We've had a very exciting show this evening. Well, of course... Uh, the good folks at Seagram's have made this such a marvelous tournament. $40,000 on top. It's the third year they have sponsored the event. And uh, let's hope they sponsor for many, many more years. Better shot. Ooh, not quite getting the finish there. An excellent shot on lane 25. Looked good, and the ball just didn't break hard enough. Six pin just sat in the channel. Robin contemplating on her next move. She's a three-time WIBC All-American and 1987 Bowler's Journal All-American. And our good friend Jim Dressel is sitting in the audience this evening. Along with one of the old greats in the bowling industry, writing-wise, Jim Fitzgerald. Spare up there in the fourth frame. All the dignitaries turning out here for the Women's U.S. Open. This one's hooking early and through the nose, and oh, no, no, not another strike through the nose. Well, how many times have we seen it before, Danny? When the breaks are going your way, they just keep going your way. Last week, Robin felt she shouldn't have even won that tournament when she came off the lane, but things just went her way as the whole year has been going. But this lady here, Michelle Mullen, is getting the breaks tonight. Man, that's as square on the head pin as you can possibly get. <gasps> I know one thing. I think I'm going to have her buy me an Illinois lottery ticket. That's a good idea. Sure. Maybe she'll buy me one, too. <laughs> On the toes, and Michelle is going, now, wait a minute. Am I dreaming? Pinch me, please. <gasps> Boy, this is what every player wants, an opportunity to win the U.S. Open as she re-racks on lane 25. Tonight's average, 197. Almost keeping up with that 208 television pair average and looking for the double Ooh, sends it wide the ball looked like it started to come back and then it just went sliding away two four five on consecutive shots on lane 25 so that lane obviously tightening up as the lane conditioner continues to move closer to the head pin and that was her lane that she threw the nine strikes on in the previous three games Come on, Michelle, is the call from the crowd, and she spares one more time. I asked Robin Romeo what she did today in her day off. Well, I did the laundry and had the van washed, and I changed the oil, and it was just a normal day for Robin Romeo. Packed up and ready to go on to the WIBC tournament. Yeah. Our mom and dad, Joan and Ray, and nephew David are at home, wishing they could be here. Tried to get flights in, but weren't able to make it for the wall shot there she leaves a seven pin and we have a tied up match best previous finish in the u.s open for that young lady second back in 1982 when the tournament was held in hendersonville tennessee and it was non-televised at that time shinobu saito from japan who will be in the queen's tournament next week 
won that event. You're right, though. I think you hit the nail right on the head, Leila, when you said, you know, Robin has been very successful out here. Ten titles, and she's having a tremendous year this year, but she's never won a, a major championship. And, boy, she just does not want to let this one get away from her. She's finished second in Samstown National Championships twice, and uh, those were two major events that she would have liked to have won. Only three strikes through the first ten frames in the title match. Oh, that's wide of the mark. She left a week 10 last time on lane 25. Now Robin going a little more direct. Let's see exactly what happened here. Looks like she just got out of that out of bounds area as we saw Nikki do on the one shot right over the second arrow and the ball just went to the right. And we saw this happen a lot this week. Hit that one about as hard as she could and takes the eight pin out as she breathes a sigh of relief. Wanting to make sure she got that ball up to the head pin. Both players are opting to use a shinier surface ball. A little less hook. Trying to go a little more direct up that track area. The track area between the second and third arrow and she hit right over the third arrow and she didn't break up the 310, as we've seen her do so many times tonight. Well, it's been ages since she left the split in the 310. You're right. But as tight as the lanes are, this is probably not as difficult as it would normally be. She didn't get the ball far enough to the right here, and the ball went to the left. And uh, once again, she just didn't break it up, as we've seen her do. Trying to fit it inside and slides past the three. So the first opening in the championship game in the sixth frame for Michelle Mullen. A lot of fans in the background are yelling, shake it off, Michelle. Is the hometown favorite. Robin Romeo now up by 10 pins. Oh. And that was a nice shot there by Michelle. Well, I'll tell you what I like, the fact that you got right up and knew what she wanted to do with the shot and made an aggressive shot and hit the pocket rather than standing around wondering what you're going to try and accomplish. She really is putting on a good show here tonight, Denny. Making the shots really when she's needed them. Oh, as I say that, I thought I might have jinxed her there. Never a doubt, as we say. So a 10 pin lead now for Robin Romeo as she steps up in the seventh frame. Don't forget, immediately following the Seagram's Coolers U.S. Open, Sports Center, Bob Lee and Dan Patrick with all the latest scores in the NBA playoffs and Major League Baseball. Better shot there. Right around the 11-12 board, very direct towards the pocket. Thing of beauty last night in the position round game. She shot a big 250 game to nail down the top spot. She can see here right the line her ball takes. Just around the 11, 12 board and the ball stays. She gets the wall shot. So a big double in the seventh and the eighth, and she's just kind of grabbed this one by the throat. A super shot there, very aggressive. She went wide last time on lane 25. This time she made sure she got it up to the head pin, and she did it with a lot of speed. And you can see the pressure now on Michelle Mullen, who won three games via the spare, basically. And now she finds herself 22 pins down, and she's got to throw some strikes. The pressure building and lane 26 being the lane that she keeps going high. Denny, she had to go right with it. She did, and the results were we're missing the head pin here. Hangs in with the spare. Could shoot 202 if she would strike out. Now, Robin did opt that Michelle finishes on lane 26. It's the lane she has not been hitting. Lane 25, lane she has struck on quite a bit. And looking for that foundation strike right here. Oh, 
by the head pin one more time. And uh, with each frame without a strike, Robin Romeo moving a step closer to her first major championship. And with a lot of tournaments left to go, if she wins here tonight, she could bypass Lisa's record from last year. Yeah, Lisa Wagner becoming the first woman ever to win over $100,000 in a season. But uh, for Robin Romeo, she would go to 73950 And uh, we're not even done with this segment yet. With 16 events left in 1989. Well, if it didn't have 40,000 on top in this one, it'd be a hard hard road to get to 100,000. Keep in mind, Lisa Wagner won this event last year in Winston-Salem. Vaulted her to the greatest year a woman's ever had bowling. Trying to keep the pressure on right there, getting a little bit right again. Catching that out of bounds area. Second time she has left the 128, but uh, the last version was on lane 25. Not really hurting her too much. She can convert the spare. As she leads by 22 pins. Oh, she waited for a moment and it backed up. Well, the key situation now, the best Michelle Mullen could do would be 189, and so that kind of sets the table for Robin Romeo. Robin Romeo just needing count on this ball. She got ahead of herself a little bit. Leaves a one, two, four. So the count hurts her there. Yes, it did. She needed count on that ball. A spare, and she locks up the U.S. Open Championship. A miss, and Michelle Mullen can still strike out and win. Probably her toughest spare conversion of her career, and oh my gosh. She chops it off, and all of the sudden, it turns completely in the favor of Michelle Mullen with two strikes and nine. She could win the championship. 187 for Robin Romeo, who will live a long time and remember that shot if Michelle Mullen doubles up here in the 10th. Well, we saw things go her way last week in Hyattsville, Maryland. This is not... Michelle's good lane, but we saw her strike when she needed it last time. Plenty of roll. Is it going to get to the head pin? No. And Robin Romeo wins the Seagram's Coolers U.S. Open. $40,000 in its title number four here in 1989. And it's the year of Romeo on the LPBT Tour. Vince Partridge, Vice President of Seagram's, of course, with a $40,000 check. John Hillman, the BPAA President, with a beautiful silver medallion. And, of course, the jacket from Chief Wapinski. So long, everyone, from Addison, Illinois. By Seagram's Coolers. Pure Seagram's, pure fun. By Lucite. For a tough, resilient finish, paint with Lucite, the thick skin that won't give in. And by the good time, great taste of McDonald's. Next week, the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour heads off to Bismarck, Mandan, North Dakota for the championship.